friends today i'm dealing with one of the important part in the brain which has both homeostatic and hormonal regulation that is hypothalamus a part which is small in size maybe of the size of the almond and governs our all homeostatic and the endocrine functions this lecture i would like to plan in the following way in this lecture i will cover the parts the connections and the functions of the hypothalamus and in the subsequent lectures i will deal with individual functions as a separate lecture series in the second lecture i would cover the hypothalamus in endocrine regulation in the third lecture hypothalamus in temperature regulation fourth hypothalamus in feeding and satiety behavior hypothalamus the water regulation thirst and post pituitary regulation the hypothalamus the sleep regulation hypothalamus in uh, regulation of the circadian rhythms hypothalamus in regulating the limbic functions and uh, or hypothalamus and the limbic functions and uh, hypothalamus and autonomic functions and if anything comes up, uh, crops up again maybe i will cover that area also let us uh, now consider uh, where is hypothalamus you see this is the brain stem here this is the midbrain this part is the midbrain above the midbrain this blue area is the hypothalamus now you can see this blue area which is situated above the pituitary gland this is the pituitary gland and uh, this uh, this is the uh, optic uh, nerve that is optic chiasma it's coming up here and uh, you have that this is corpus callosum this is the cortical uh, area cerebral uh, cortex cerebellum you can have the relation of the hypothalamus you can see this this blue area is on the hypothalamus and uh, this is uh, one of those areas uh, which uh, which contains a cluster of nuclei that means it, though it is small it has a, a very densely packed nuclei which are performing a, a specialized functions homeostatic and endocrine and uh, regulatory functions now if you are looking at here this is the uh, real uh, picture you can just see the hypothalamus here in this red circle you can just see the red circle. this is the pituitary gland and uh, this is the mammillary body so this is a posterior side as you see the cerebellum here the cingulate this is the corpus callosum there and this is a hypothalamus over this thing you have the um, the uh, thalamus sitting on the top so this is optic chiasma and uh, optic nerve is coming up maybe optic nerve is coming up like this so this is the overall structure of the or the area of the hypothalamus uh, to give you the idea so it is the area under the cerebral cortex or brain and above the midbrain and this area is having a cluster of neurons now let us go a uh, little little more further so now this hypothalamus uh, you can just uh, study uh, because this hypothalamic area whatever that area uh, triangular that, uh, that 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 that's uh, you can just see a sort of a triangular area this triangular area so if that a triangular area here that was studied in a, uh, the sections like uh, this a this this line is coming this is a frontal view and uh, b is this uh, block this block you can just see this block uh, this this view that is the uh, medial view showing uh, many of the nuclei mm -hmm. so this is i have taken it from a candles uh, textbook now if we take up the section a that is a frontal view of the hypothalamus 
this XLA frontal view of the hypothalamus, these cluster of nuclei look like this. So that means uh, here is the third ventricle, and this the periventricular. This is periventricular nuclei. These are the nuclei of the hypothalamus. This is the area of the hypothalamus. So then we have the arcuate nucleus here. So then this is the ventromedial hypothalamic nucleus, dorsomedial hypothalamic nucleus. Uh, this forms the fornix of the limbic system. And uh, here is the uh, optic uh, chiasma, and this is supra optic nucleus, supra optic nucleus. Uh, and uh, this is a uh, uh, lateral tuberal nucleus. Okay, then this part is the lateral nucleus. In this uh, section, you see the ventricle and the the this is the mi midline this is the midline and the the uh, the anterior posterior and uh, the lateral relation so the lateral nucleus is quite clear here you can just see the lateral nucleus however when we take up the section uh, like this a block block section like this with a medial view so then we see the hypothalamus uh, like these, these uh, cluster of neurons, these uh, uh, areas, uh, you can just see these areas and uh, they are all uh, uh, mentioned here. Maybe I will come back in detail. So this, this was the plane in which this uh, section A previous uh, view was on. And this is the plane in which uh, it is coming up. So you have these uh, various nuclei. Now, to consider this thing, it is more. It looks more complex and uh, more um, uh, difficult to put them in one. Uh, these things you can have. Uh, you you see so many number of uh, nuclei are there. Uh, so if you, if you can count, uh, so one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, maybe thirteen, fourteen. Uh, nuclei are there and each one is performing the things and you can just see here supra optic nucleus supra chiasmatic nucleus and the lateral pre optic nucleus and medial pre optic nucleus the anterior hypothalamic nucleus medial pre optic nucleus paraventricular nucleus and then uh, we have a mammillary body and a mammillary nucleus lateral hypothalamic area and uh, so on now this is pituitary and this uh, comes the arcuate nucleus here. Now to make it uh, clearer to us uh, to understand the various nuclei, uh, as a, as a student uh, I want to be clear and how I want to make it. So this is the uh, thing I have made. Maybe if you are looking at uh, this hypothalamic area can be divided into uh, three three components basically three areas one the anterior area the intermediate area or uh, it is also known as a tubular area or uh, infundibular area this is the infundibulum the tubular area uh, tubular area and the infundibular area and the posterior area so this is the posterior just uh, above the mammillary body so we have three regions so these three regions uh, host uh, a number of nuclei and the number of nuclei are named according to their uh, the location. Say, for example, here optic chiasma and uh, optic nerve. So then, accordingly, the the nuclei are named. So if I, if I look into the uh, here the anterior area, I'm just trying to look into the anterior group of uh, nuclei. So this the in this area, I want to. Uh, place the group of nuclei. This is the anterior group of nuclei. Then first thing is the optic, uh, before the optic, pre-optic area. This is pre-optic nucleus. Then just above the optic chiasma, suprachiasmatic nucleus. Then after the above the optic nerve, supraoptic nucleus. Pre-optic nucleus, suprachiasmatic nucleus, supraoptic nucleus, and this large area, the anterior nucleus, and the just about that because if you are trying to see this, this part comes near the ventricles. This is a paraventricular nucleus. Periventricular, I, I have shown in the earlier. 
that is uh, coming with the ventricular uh, uh, region. So the periventricular nucleus and the paraventricular nucleus. So if I were to say in the anterior group of neurons, we have a pre-optic nucleus, suprachiasmatic nucleus, supraoptic nucleus, the anterior nucleus, and the paraventricular nucleus. The pre-optic nucleus is again divided into the medial and the lateral, lateral pre, pre lateral preoptic nucleus and the medial preoptic nucleus. I have included uh, two more structures, uh, the organosum uh, vasculatum linear ter lamina terminalis. Uh, that is uh, one of those area which is concerned with the, uh, the drinking behavior, OVLT and subfornical organ. So they are also participating in, in association with the hypothalamus. I have included them here. So that means I have included the OVLT and SFO as a part of the hypothalamic components. So this is as far as the hypothalamic. So now you just see that the nuclei which are near here, they are concerned with the functions of this thing. This is the uh, anterior pituitary adenohypophysis. This is the uh, posterior pituitary, that is the neurohypophysis, and this is the intermediate lobe. And uh, you have these uh, median eminence and uh, the mammillary body here. This is a third cranial nerve nucleus. That is how it is coming up. Uh, and maybe you will have a, a mammillothalamic tract is projecting something like that. Now, if what, what are the nuclei in the tuberal area or in fundibular area? So now I have. Uh, here, one, two, three, four uh, nuclei are clusters in the tuberal area. These are arcuate nucleus, uh, just about this uh, angular area that is angular or curved, that is arcuate nucleus. Then uh, ventral median nucleus, dorsal median nucleus, and the dorsal nucleus. So in the tuberal area, we have four. So now I have made another one here, another two here. Tubero, lateral tuberal and uh, tubero mammillary. So that means uh, if, uh, if you, this area is a lateral tubular, uh, lateral tuberal area. So that is uh, some of those clusters here. This is lateral tubular and the tubero mammillary. So that means uh, the infantibular and the mammillary region, this, this component where uh, this is a tubero mammillary area. These two things uh, uh, may be added, but primarily these four, Arcute, ventromedial, dorsal medial, and dors uh, dorsal nucleus of the hypothalamus. Okay, so then what are the nuclear areas in the posterior region? And in the posterior region, primarily we have uh, only three uh, three nuclei. One is a mammillary nuclei, then posterior group of nuclei and a lateral group of nuclei. So now the lateral is not seen here, lateral is seen in the midline structures. So now, so this, uh, somewhere here I place the lateral nucleus. Now, this mammillary uh, nucleus is divided into uh, three components, uh, lateral medullary, medial mammillary nucleus, and the pre-mammillary nucleus. So that is near the tuberal region, near the tuberal regions. So that means uh, there are, uh, nearly about uh, uh, five uh, nuclei, one, two, three, four, lateral is not seen, lateral is coming up. So these are the nuclear patterns of the hypothalamus. Uh, to summarize all, all of these things, uh, uh, you, you have this thing here. So the anterior region, we have uh, the suprachiasmatic, uh, pre-optic, supraoptic, anterior, paraventricular, OVLT, SFO, subfornical organ. In the infundibular area, that is a tuberal nucleus, we have an arcuate nucleus, ventromedian nucleus, dorsomedian nucleus, and a dorsal nucleus. And in the posterior segment, you have, because it is all surrounding with a mammillary body, so uh, medial mammillary nucleus, lateral medial mammillary nucleus, pre-mammillary nucleus, and a posterior nucleus and a lateral uh, nucleus of the or a lateral hypothalamic area. That is what uh, the in, in summary uh, about the various uh, nuclei of the hypothalamus. Now, so this is uh, uh, what I have taken from the whatever I have made there in the Genong. You open up, you have this figure, and he has mentioned it nicely, and uh, he has given it whatever I am trying to explain. They are all there. 
they are all there and the anterior region most rostral rostral region above and uh, rostral to the optic asthma contains pre optic nucleus this is a then uh, supra optic supra chiasmatic and uh, paraventricular paraventricular nucleus and uh, another sexually dimorphic area which is in, that means uh, it's whole thing is uh, uh, coming up there the tuberal area i again repeat dorsal ventral and uh, the arcuate arcuate nucleus so these are the things arcuate nucleus ventral median nucleus dorsal median nucleus and dorsal nucleus and we have the uh, lateral component uh, lateral tubular uh, nucleus now here in the uh, the posterior this thing posterior nucleus pre-mammillary uh, medial mammillary and lateral mammillary nucleus so this is what the figure figure has shown these are the anatomical uh, nuclei of the hypothalamus now i uh, just try to recall because uh, uh, the anterior one is connected with the optic nerve and optic asthma and accordingly the names are coming the middle one they are concerned with the the positions the ventromedian dorsomedian and dorsal and arcuate the posterior one they are easy to remember the posterior and uh, mammillary nucleus pre lateral and medial and the lateral entire lateral hypothalamic area now coming back uh, so what are the connections of the hypothalamus here i have just uh, enumerated the hypothalamic connection so maybe in the next slide i will show you the detailed uh, uh, connectivity the hypothalamus receives uh, the apparent apparent inputs from the olfactory area to the hypothalamus the frontal lobe the prefrontal cortex that would reach to the hypothalamus the hippocampus that would connect to the hypothalamus the thalamus connects to the hypothalamus amygdala the part of the limbic system because this is also a part of the limbic system they will connect to the hypothalamus the sensory system all the somatosensory modalities uh, they are all connected to hypothalamus especially the hypothalamus uh, uh, for uh, some amount of the autonomic activity so they will give the information especially all the sensory modalities especially when it comes to the pain painful sensation or a nociception or thermal sensation because if you are if you are looking at the thermal sensation pain fibers and thermal fibers because hypothalamus is the seat for uh, monitoring the stress responses the pain is a stressful thing and the thermal response is uh, it is this thing so it receives inputs from the uh, the brain stem reticular formation the pain fibers and the thermal fibers that I have discussed when I have touched about the pain and when I have talked about the thermal sensation. The hypothalamus is uh, uh, connected with the reticular activating system. So this reticular activating system, that is especially all the aminergic and uh, the cholinergic components are connected to hypothalamus and for keeping us uh, in a rosal state. So this reticular activating system uh, that comprises of the uh, the rafe nucleus, uh, locus ceruleus, uh, periaqueductal gray, parabrachial nucleus, which I have not included here, the parabrachial nucleus. So all these things are forming the part of the reticular activating system. They would be connecting to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus, especially the suprachiasmatic nucleus, is connected with the pineal gland for uh, to for the biological clock it has the biological clock in terms of the day month or the seasons now coming back uh, here what are the outputs of the hypothalamus the efferent connections of the hypothalamus the efferent connections of the hypothalamus reach the the spinal sympathetic centers the sympathetic neurons governing the med from the medulla to the spinal centers and it will also send to the brain stem brainstem autonomic nerves especially the, the the one which is governing with the uh, paras especially the vagus brainstem autonomic nerves that is also uh, being connected then it is connected directly with the innervation 
that is a hypothalamo hypophysial uh, um, tract what we call it as a postrepitatory uh, neurons or uh, postrepitatory uh, that means uh, uh, the um, vasopressinergic or uh, idiot secreting neurons and uh, the oxytocin secreting neurons uh, uh, which are uh, really which are released into the postrepitatory so they have a direct uh, synthesis there in the hypothalamus then hypothalamus is connected with the thalamus thalamus there uh, in the in the diet kefala and uh, then it is also uh, connected with the the motor cortex so all the areas in the motor cortex the cingulate cortex the limbic cortex the neocortex the prefrontal cortex and all those areas they were connected uh, uh, that is why i have just uh, uh, i have just missed that uh, the, not only the motor cortex uh, all the cortical areas of the brain are connected uh, with the hypothalamus especially those with the cingulate gyrus and a limbic uh, area so they are essential because whatever the uh, responses they are providing they have to be uh, sent back because most of these connections are uh, again uh, reciprocal they receive the inputs whatever the inputs they are giving they get the information back and hypothalamus uh, is connected to the anterior pituitary may not be by the nerves uh, through the hormones through the hormones besides this uh, there are more, con more many more connections uh, the hypothalamus has so that means uh, uh, to again uh, review these uh, connections it's much easy so it is connected with the limbic system the limbic system consists of the olfactory hippocampus amygdala it is connected with the sensory system all the somatosensory modalities the pain fibers thermal fibers it is connected it is connected with the thalamus it is connected with the amygdala the behavior it is connected with the reticular activating system that may be responsible for our uh, arousal state or awake state and uh, the sleep sleepful state it is connected with the pineal gland to to regulate the biological clock and uh, in turn it will give the outputs to the sympathetic nerves the parasympathetic nerves the posterior pituitary and uh, to the thalamus and to the various uh, cortical areas and to the interpreter that is what the connections now just a, just let let us look at that uh, all the connections uh, in a in one uh, chart so though though it is frightening to have so many things uh, let me start with the this is the center point is the hypothalamus these are the inputs so now i have started here the cingulate gyrus cingulate cortex the cingulate cortex is part of the limbic cortex uh, that is connected with the the hippocampus amygdala septal nucleus piriform nucleus and this is interconnected with the this receives inputs and outputs from hypothalamus i you can just see that uh, um, uh, the you can just see this uh, both both directions uh, through the fornix and the stria terminalis mm -hmm. so you can have these uh, connections now you we have olfactory cortex here that is uh, giving the connections uh, to the hypothalamus now so you have a mammillary body so this hypo hypothalamus is sitting with the just about the, some part of the posterior part of the hypothalamus uh, comprises of the the mammillary nucleus the posterior nucleus this is the mammillary body and this mammillary body they will have that mammillothalamic tract what is that papage papage circuit so mammillothalamic tract uh, that goes into the anterior nucleus of the thalamus and from the anterior nucleus of the thalamus it goes to the cingulate cortex uh, and this whole thing uh, this whole thing makes the what is called a papage circuit of the limbic system that uh, that keeps up our behavior our behavior so the cingulate cortex amygdala and back so on that goes on so now the hypothalamus is a uh, receiving inputs and outputs to the thalamus and thalamus in turn is connected with the neocortical areas cingulate cortex the frontal cortex so thalamus is in, uh, is connected with all these areas so that is uh, one thing there and uh, medial uh, thalamic nuclei are connected with the uh, frontal cortex and this frontal cortex that would give inputs to the hypothalamus now this this one is um, direct through the medial thalamic nuclei 
and this one is a direct uh, connections from the uh, frontal uh, prefrontal lobe into the thalamus now i have put uh, this uh, eye here that is from the visual cortex and uh, the what are called uh, those uh, uh, this these signals may not be these are photic signals these photic signals may not be visual signals these photic signals are necessary for our biological clock that means uh, maintaining the light and the dark that means uh, uh, whatever the suprachiasmatic nucleus uh, they are connected so that means uh, these photic signals uh, they have a very devious path uh, they go down into the uh, the spinal cord and then ascend back and, uh, these, these photic signals coming from the retina they will go to the the brain stem and down and then come back uh, and they will reach to the hypothalamus uh, especially the suprachiasmatic nucleus uh, about the photic signals so that is uh, that is why i have put the eyes here these are photic signals may not have the visual uh, activity in fact they are also connected to the visual cortex mind you here uh, one point so the blind persons will have a circadian rhythms so you just uh, try to imagine that situation because uh, uh, don't think that the blind persons do not have the circadian rhythms or ultradian rhythms because blind persons have day night cycles blind persons are uh, having the cyclical variations especially the females they will have the menstruation so these are components of the the whatever the photic signals we receive now the the hypothalamus is also connected with all the ascending tracts the somatosensory this is somatosensory inputs the visceral inputs the reticular activating system the pain and the thermal sensation all these sensory modalities sensory modalities the pain thermal sensation reticular activating system and all the ascending systems which are going up to the cortex or maybe respect to cortices there and they will give a collaterals to the through the through the uh, reticular formation bridge here the hypothalamus is connected it has a bilateral connection uh, on both sides bidirectional connection with the nts in the in the medulla because uh, this nts is governing the the cardiac function heart functions and respiratory functions especially uh, trying to monitor the respiratory and uh, heart activity this is autonomic activity so that will that will cover the uh, this is connected now the hypothalamus is connected to the the neurohypophysis nih is a neurohypophysis that is post tributary through the oxytocin and uh, vasopressin releasing uh, uh, neurons so this is a uh, neurons direct neurons from the hypothalamus to the hypophysium hypothalamus hypophysial so but uh, here the hypothalamus is connected to the anterior pituitary adenohypophysis uh, uh, adenohypophysis through the releasing hormones or release inhibiting hormones so these are hormones this this one is this flag is the hormonal things uh, the hormones they are trying to cover that's the connectivity then uh, we have the uh, the hypothalamus gives to the uh, medial uh, forebrain um, bundle and the dorsal longitudinal bundle through that that will connect to the autonomic centers the autonomic centers so they will connect to the subthalamic nucleus and the brain stem reticular formation so that is how it is connecting hypothalamus and the subthalamic nucleus have a direct connections from the uh, hypothalamus now the hypothalamus and mammillary body they are in a close alley and uh, they will have a connectivity there so then here we have a rafe nucleus the locus ceruleus the parabrachial nucleus these are component of the reticular formation and they are connected to the uh, connected to the medial forebrain area and also the hypothalamus is connected with the the periaqueductal gray so that forms a periaqueductal gray and uh, even a lateral uh, pontoperuncular nucleus uh, pontoperuncular nucleus and the lateral dorsal nucleus uh, they are connected here uh, and they will be they will be talking to the brainstem reticular formation so these are the various connections uh, uh, the inputs and outputs of the uh, hypothalamus so now to to make your life easier i have enumerated here i now i have shown them here in the pictures and whichever you feel comfortable you can use but uh, uh, 
this one would give a comprehensively the entire uh, a chart of the hypothalamic connectivity, uh, afferent and uh, efferent connectivity of the hypothalamus. Now, move on. Uh, what are the uh, parts and the functions? So here I'm just trying to uh, have taken it from a, a guidance textbook. Uh, the guidance textbook just i'm trying to see the posterior hypothalamus so this is a hypothalamus they have created many of them in the if you are trying to see the internet they will try to show it as a um, uh, cow or a quadruped wherein this is the head and this is the optic chiasma the eye and you have the uh, pre-optic area the posterior pre-optic area and uh, this is the supraoptic uh, nucleus, and this is the paraventricular nucleus, this is the arcuate nucleus. Maybe somewhere here we have the uh, supracasmatic, this optic chiasma, supracasmatic nucleus. Somewhere here it will be coming up, and uh, you have this uh, mammillary body here, the mammillary nucleus. So now let us consider one by one the interior group of nucleus. Uh, the paraventricular nucleus is uh, uh, concerned with the oxytocin release and the vasopressin release, vasopressin release, water conservation. Medial preoptic area is concerned with the visceral function, especially the bladder contraction, and it is also concerned with the the autonomic activity on the heart and the blood vessels or the the sympathetic and the parasympathetic activity on the on the heart, especially the heart rate and the blood pressure. Now we have the posterior uh, preoptic, so that means the preoptic nucleus, posterior side that is concerned with the that is a part of the preoptic nucleus. Uh, body temperature regulation. These are uh, panting, sweating. These are uh, heat loss mechanism and uh, uh, thyrotropin inhibition. So that means uh, these are all heat heat loss uh, mechanisms. So, so by inhibiting thyroid, the metabolism is decreased, uh, trying to uh, reduce the heat gain. Now, we, we come here, supraoptic nucleus. This also is vasopressin. So vasopressin is by two counts, the supraoptic nucleus and also from the paraventricular nucleus. Now, this is in infundibulum. Now, we come here, the arcuate nucleus, the arcuate nucleus and periventricular nucleus, they cover number of uh, neuroendocrine uh, components, all the releasing hormones or releasing inhibiting hormones, uh, they are all there. In addition, we have in the arcuate nucleus, it, it regulates feeding through these uh, AGRP and the NPY, that is uh, orexinergic uh, neurons and uh, POMC and uh, CART and uh, oxygenic uh, neurons, so that is uh, one part that is in the arcuate nucleus. OVLT, that is the organome uh, vasculosum and uh, the minor terminalis. Uh, so that is the osmoreceptors are located that they will try to uh, regulate the, the uh, vasopressinergic uh, receptors or a drinking behavior. Then subfornical organ, so that is again a drinking regulator. One is a drinking regulator, another is a regulation of the vasopressin release from these things. So you can You can just, Look at, look at that and this is connected with this and this and the drinking behavior. Now mammillary body is concerned with the feeding reflexes. So ventromedian nucleus is for satiety and the neuroendocrine control. Nowadays the concept is changing for arcuate nucleus which is a regulator for the feeding and uh, the orexigenic and anorexigenic because this arcuate nucleus is concerned with the ventromedian nucleus and uh, uh, mammillary body and the lateral uh, lateral nucleus uh, lateral nucleus so that's again another uh, center for the the feeding or the hunger then perifornical area this is for hunger blood pressure and uh, rage that behavior that means it's connected with the uh, connected with the limbic system and similarly the mammillary area that is also connected with the limbic system for the mammillothalamic tract mammillothalamic tract so it's not only the feeding behavior the mammillothalamic tract that behavior is also going on in the posterior hypothalamus that is concerned with the the blood pressure that is sympathetic which is uh, demonstrated the vasodilatation or the severing. These are sympathetic activation. And this is also uh, concerned with the, the heat uh, thermoregulation, thermoregulation. 
So then a dorsomedial nucleus is concerned with the visceral regulation of the GI system. Now I have uh, uh, so many things coming up uh, uh, and uh, uh, this is the nucleus wise how they are uh, how they are doing what 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 part is doing what so that is the that is the thing however uh, before we make it uh, we just enumerate all the functions all the functions of the hypothalamus i have uh, just uh, listed the 10 functions of hypothalamus right here one endocrine function hypothalamus control the endocrine organs directly as it happens in case of posterior pituitary direct neural connection from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary or by releasing hormones or release hormones or release inhibiting hormones govern the anterior pituitary secretions all these uh, trh crh uh, or gnrh all those releasing hormones are ghrh growth hormone releasing hormone or growth hormone uh, release inhibiting, inhibiting hormone or uh, the prolactin inhibiting hormone something like that these release inhibiting hormones then thirdly hypothalamus uh, the govern the endocrine or uh, regulate the endocrine organ through the autonomic activity because uh, uh, they it, it it is the center seat for the autonomic activity it it balances both sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions and sympathetic divisions it would give this uh, uh, adrenal medulla that uh, flight and uh, fight uh, mood reactions the canons reactions that is the adrenal medullary activity so that is uh, uh, coming through the this is one of those uh, medulla secreting enormous amount of adrenaline so that is uh, coming from the hypothalamus or it may govern uh, other part maybe if you are looking at the if, if it is governing the heart heart activity heart activity through the parasympathetic system or uh, cholinergic component parasivagus is uh, supplying the pancreas that may influence the secretion though the pancreatic hormonal secretion is uh, humorally mediated but the pancreatic functions uh, they require the cholinergic inputs for their uh, these things and that may indirectly influence the pancreatic activity for secreting the insulin indirectly and we have the number of GIT hormones, they may be regulated by the autonomic influence of the, this thing. So this is number one is endocrine regulation. Number two is a thermoregulation because it has a centers which produce heat, which has a center which lose heat. So thermogenesis and thermo, thermal loss and uh, thermostat, there are three things there. So it will regulate the uh, body temperature. Uh, at a particular level 38.4 degrees celsius or or uh, 98.4 maybe it may range 98.4 degree fahrenheit so then it will the hypothalamus also regulate the water homeostasis water homeostasis means uh, there are two components there one thirst behavior that means uh, producing the thirst drinking behaviors and idiot secretion this water homeostasis is a function of the decreased uh, the extracellular fluid volume or because of the increased uh, uh, increased uh, osmolality of the extracellular fluid so that means uh, the it has the hypothalamus has the osmoreceptors through the osmoreceptors it will try to do this uh, or it has certain other uh, neurotransmitters that would activate the thirst center and the drinking behavior and it is secretion the hypothalamus is uh, concerned with the uh, the feeding feeding behaviors that means uh, the hunger and satiety that satisfaction and the hunger so that feeding behavior is interplay of the number of things number of neurotransmitters especially the arcuate nucleus uh, and uh, the ventromedian nucleus and the um, the lateral nucleus uh, they will uh, play a important thing Important thing in the regulation of the feeding behavior. Now, the dorsal uh, dorsal median nucleus is uh, uh, concerned with the visceral function, so that it is uh, the bladder control, bowel control, the motility, and the 
uh, gastric emptying and all those things, all those visceral behaviors are by the dorsal median nucleus of the hypothalamus. Suprachiasmatic nucleus uh, governs the rhythms, the biological rhythms. In the biological rhythm, if I list uh, the daily rhythms, daily changes in our activity, especially the hormonal profiles, or monthly changes in the hormonal profile, or uh, cyclical changes in the hormonal profile, the onset of puberty, onset of uh, menopause, and all those rhythms are controlled by the hypothalamus. Now, in the, in the daily one, we have uh, this uh, sleep and wakeful state. So you have those hypothalamic nuclei which govern the sleep and wakeful state. Hypothalamus uh, uh, governs the autonomic regulation. Hypothalamus is also necessary for uh, uh, retention of the memory because uh, the memory and the learning is associated with uh, sleep and uh, the memory consolidation and uh, memory formation. It helps that. So that means uh, uh, especially the mammillary body. So that will be uh, important. And uh, in the vernix and cephalopathy, there will be some loss of the hypothalamic, hypothalamic uh, uh, connection to the hippocampus. So now the limbic functions, so they govern the emotion, the rage and flaccidity, the maternal behavior, especially the uh, whatever the uh, how a mother uh, the you you can even if you can see any of those uh, animals uh, the mothers uh, if you try to touch the pups they will try to um, attack on you whether it's a rat cat or a dog you can just see that same thing uh, that maternal behavior is invested here in this uh, hypothalamus the mating the time of mating and uh, sexual behavior is associated with the hypothalamus so I again repeat the endocrine, it has endocrine functions. It regulates the temperature. It regulates water intake. It regulates thirst and the drinking behavior. It regulates the food feeding and hunger, satiety. It regulates the visceral functions. It regulates the biological rhythms daily, monthly, and seasonal. And it regulates sleep. It regulates the autonomic function. It regulates memory and learning. It regulates the limbic functions. So these are, uh, I have listed the 10 functions. Now, uh, let me uh, take you to this uh, table. Just uh, uh, briefly, I go, I, I quickly go through these tables. Uh, this is taken from Genong's textbook of physiology. And I just uh, slightly um, mentioned temperature regulation, heat and cold the anterior hypothalamus, posterior hypothalamus. These, these are the connections, thermoreceptors in the skin, deep tissue, and um, this is a spinal cord, a reticular system, and others. They are all receiving the inputs. The sympathetic activation, it is the dorsal hypothalamus and the posterior hypothalamus, and these are limbic areas and emotions are involved. The fear and rage, again, it is again a limbic, limbic component, amygdala is involved. So now it is a diffuse areas of the limbic system connections through the fornix or peripornical areas and to the uh, mammillary nuclei. And it is connected with the neocortex, amygdala, septum, cingulate cortex, and others. Control of biological rhythm, suprachiasmatic nucleus, retinohypothalamic tract, and the pineal gland. Sleep and arousal, this is the anterior ventrolateral preoptic nucleus, that is a preoptic nucleus, lateral nucleus, posterior hypothalamic nucleus, suprachiasmatic nucleus. So that means uh, I have put them one preoptic nucleus, lateral and posterior hypothalamic nucleus, and suprachiasmatic nucleus. And you have a number of connections, the reticular activating system, the aminergic, Cholinergic. Aminergic means serotonin, uh, serotonin, histamine, and um, dopamine, uh, norepinephrine. Cholinergic is a style choline. A neocortex, thalamus, basal, forebrain area, limbic area are all connected with the sleep and arousal. Now, if you are trying to think about the endocrine components, uh, maybe I am taking it here. Oxytocin is released from the supraoptic and paraventricular nucleus and it is been receiving afferent inputs from the the uh, touch receptors uh, located in the areola of the breast or around the nipple 
and uh, the uterine uh, uh, the cervical component or the uterine portions even to the extent the external genitalia external genitalia of the females the clitoral and uh, the uh, the uh, the cervical area that's oxytocin release the pri primarily it is the the breast and the surroundings then trh release that is the thyrotropin releasing hormone there are ventricular nucleus and periventricular nucleus I have made two two areas here: paraventricular nucleus and the periventricular nucleus. They they are uh, concerned with the temperature receptors and others, because uh, TRH is a, a hormone which increases the TSH secretion. TSH increases the uh, T3 and T4 levels, thyroid hormone, and which produces calorie genesis. So that is what how you can link about uh, uh, these operands. Then CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone. Release hormone that release that is again from the same area the paraventricular and the periventricular area and it is coming the crh is a uh, stress hormone from the limbic area that is the emotion stress reticular formation the hypo hypothalamus feedback interpretatory that means uh, the feedback from the interpretatory and uh, suprachiasmatic nucleus so these are the areas where crh, CRH is regulated and GnRH release, it is coming from the uh, pre-optic area. This is sensitive to estrogen, visual receptors, uh, tactile receptors present in the skin, and the genitalia for uh, reflex ovulators. So some animals are uh, reflex ovulators. When the genitalia is touched, the ovulation takes place in some some animal animals in the animal kingdom. But uh, in a human being, it is the ovulation is governed by the uh, GnRH release, the spurt of the GnRH activity that is uh, uh, dependent upon the, the estrogen progesterone levels, uh, uh, changing the uh, positive uh, feedback to the negative, negative feedback to the positive feedback and increasing the uh, GnRH secretion. So that means the, the increasing the sensitivity or the gain of the uh, GnRH secretion in this thing. Maybe GnRH secretion, um, what happens in case of the uh, before puberty. So the even the small amounts of these uh, estrogen uh, may inhibit it uh, uh, severely. Later on stages, there is a cyclical development. That is uh, how the behavior is. Now, prolactin inhibiting hormone and prolactin releasing hormone, they are coming from the orchid nucleus and uh, they are uh, associated with the touch receptors and the unknown receptors. So the prolactin is a hormone necessary for the synthesis of milk or production of the milk from the mammary gland. So now that is uh, associated with the touch receptors around the, uh, the breast and other uh, things uh, coming from the, the somatosensory things. Uh, so they will they will increase the prolactin secretion. Now GRH growth hormone releasing hormone and somatostatin. So they are coming from the periventricular and arcuate the nucleus. These are concerned with the somatic receptors. So maybe coming from the even some part of the uh, the bone and the tissue and the, the muscles uh, and all those components, they will be uh, talking about the uh, somatic receptors. Now going on to the other uh, appetitive appetitive behaviors, you can just think uh, thirst. Thirst is the hypothalamic area is a OVLT organism, organism, organum vasculosum lamina terminalis and the SFO that is the subphonical organ, the paraventricular nucleus, supraoptic nucleus, lateral hypothalamic nucleus. These are the areas for thirst and this is the osmo receptors. They are they are located in OVLT. And uh, angiotensin, they are expressed with the angiotensin 2 receptors. Uh, angiotensin 2 coming from the renin angiotensin uh, mechanism that would be, and also there are angiotensinergic nerves uh, uh, in these uh, areas coming from the subthornical organ. So this is uh, uh, about the thirst mechanism. Hunger and satiety, again, we have a series of uh, uh, areas, the acute area, in the acute area, there are two components, one orexinergic component and one uh, anorexic component. Uh, orexinergic component having a neurons, uh, what are known as the AGRP or LNPY neurons. 
and uh, anorexigenic uh, component it is the POMCR called neurons in addition we have a ventromedial uh, nucleus dorsomedial nucleus paraventricular nucleus lateral hypothalamic nucleus they are all participate in the hunger and satiety and i will be dealing with each one of them in a detailed manner when i take up these individual things uh, uh, separately and uh, these are connected with the glucostat the leptin receptors orexin receptors the nu uh, nucleus uh, tractus uh, solitarius in the in the medulla limbic system neocortex and other somatosensory are uh, visceral inputs especially those visceral inputs coming from ghrelin and uh, the uh, the uh, viscera especially the stomach the distension of the stomach sexual behavior it is located in the entire hypothalamus uh, and in males it is in the pyriform cortex that means these uh, sexual uh, neurons are sensitive to estrogen and androgens so that means uh, we can change the hypothalamus because this sexual uh, uh, characteristic of the hypothalamus can be uh, changed if uh, you expose these uh, cells to the androgens or dip deplete them with estrogenic uh, these things uh, they may change it to the uh, androgenic behavior and the person that particular animal may behave like a uh, male or a female when there are uh, uh, changes in the sense these uh, estrogen or androgens or uh, changing the exposure of these uh, neurons uh, it changed now maternal behavior i was talking about uh, this the medial preoptic area anterior hypothalamus ventromedial hypothalamus and uh, they are connected to the tegmentum and some part of the the midbrain and uh, some part of the reticular formation the pontine reticular formation they receive inputs from the tactile and neocortical inputs whatever the sending inputs and they also receive inputs from the insular cortex the parabrachial nucleus and the insular cortex that's the maternal behavior so that means the the animal is very much uh, sensitive to or uh, for nourishing the baby or protecting the baby for feeding the baby and for caring the baby and all those are maternal behaviors that is been uh, uh, invested with the uh, medial preoptic area intrahypothalamic area and medial hypothalamic area now for mem memory and learning we have a, a supramamillary uh, nuclei of the hypothalamus and the lateral hypothalamic area and it is connected with the hippocampus perifornical uh, cortex or a prefrontal cortex sorry prefrontal cortex and cingulate cortex so i will deal uh, with each one of them separately in a detailed manner when i take up the uh, functional uh, uh, these things or uh, lectures on each one of them each one of them so thus uh, a uh, if you are looking at the hypothalamus a very small area with the clusters of nuclei above the brain stem near the pituitary gland and divided into anterior tuberal that is infundibular and the posterior areas anterior intermediate and posterior areas where a number of nuclei can be identified and which are performing a specific function it has vast connections extending from the spinal cord brain stem areas the midbrain areas the reticular formation neocortex the olfactory cortex the limbic cortex the endocrine glands the, the visual area the pineal gland the thalamus the autonomic nervous system and other areas it plays a crucial role in many important functions such as regulating the endocrine organs the body temperature biological cycles daily monthly and seasonal appetite that means uh, feeding and uh, hunger drinking water that means uh, the thirst mechanism the sexual behavior that means sexual seasons the mating behavior and the emotional responses and uh, uh, expressing the emotions is a component of the uh, hypothalamus and autonomic nervous system and uh, the sleep regulation and other homeostatic responses thus it performs a very important homeostatic and hormonal functions and it is one of those important organs that links the entire nervous system to the endocrine system
and other regulatory systems so it is very very important i would be uh, taking each one of them in a separate uh, separate uh, lectures and uh, uh, that would i will try to provide uh, the information the as much information uh, possible now uh, the keywords for today's lecture today's lecture is uh, straightforward simple so i exp i mentioned about the, the parts of the hypothalamus i mentioned about the functions of the hypothalamus I mentioned about the uh, the what are the various uh, nuclei in the anterior group, posterior group, and uh, uh, intermediate or infundibular group of neurons. And I mentioned about the connections. So maybe you consider these as a, a keywords for the uh, today's lecture to perform or uh, to try to recall those uh, information as an assignment. Now. In the next class, I will start with the hypothalamus on endocrine regulation. I have uh, I referred uh, these books, especially uh, the Guyton, Genong, and uh, Candle's textbook of neuroscience. So I have mentioned uh, the place where I have taken the information from each of these uh, uh, textbooks. Hope uh, this uh, whole thing is. Uh, covered up when when we take the hypothalamic components uh, individually thank you so much and i would appreciate if you leave uh, your comments and uh, your uh, uh, suggestions so that i can uh, take it forward thank you